All right, guys, today we're going to be working with spider gel, also called as sugar gel. So I want to share with you my setup. And so then after that, I'm going to do a demo um, showing you how to work with the product and give me some ideas. And then also to how to incorporate different nail art techniques that you have already learned, um, but putting it all together. Okay. All right, so of course I've got my little floral design here. So we have talked about your uh, press on business. So if you are uh, continuing to share your um, nails uh, on social media so that people can see what you're doing, definitely think about a background whenever you are um, taking pictures or videos of your work. So we just finished the April nail art project and you guys um, submitted the pictures and I love the backgrounds of a lot of your nail designs. So that you've been doing really good on that. Um, so background, definitely important. Um, today I will be wearing, I found some hunter, they're like a hunter green color. So they're gloves. So they're, um, it matches my uh, background here. They have pink and blue and beige and browns and um, whites and all of those different kinds of colors. So play with um, the look of your, um, the style uh, that you're trying to go for, okay? Also too, something that defers you from taking pictures or videos of your work is maybe that you haven't had time to do your own nails and so the gloves definitely help. But in the salon, the reason why we wear gloves is for exposure. So when you do nails one time or you know, you're just learning in the classroom, it's no big deal. Um, you're exposed to the chemicals, but just for a little bit, right? You file the nails once and you're good to go. But imagine you working with these products on a day-by-day -day basis, like Monday through Saturday or Tuesday through Saturday, whatever your schedule is. And from the day you walk, from the moment you walk in to the moment you leave, you are filing nails, you're working with the monomer, you're working with um, the gels, with the polishes, with the acetone, with all of the soaks and scrubs and everything it's touching your skin. Now don't forget that your skin absorbs, right? So it's absorbing everything that you're, you're touching um, that's getting onto your skin. Um, and sometimes over time, maybe not the beginning, but over time, you might get an allergic reaction or some type of reaction uh, on your skin because of so much contact and exposure to those chemicals. So that's why we wear gloves. Okay, not just for pedicures because we don't like to touch feet, although we do wear them for that, but um, definitely gloves make that a habit for you. Okay, so uh, I've got my green gloves today. And the gloves, you always want to make sure that they're pretty tight on you. You don't want loose gloves because then it's going to be, these are a little loose for me, but um, you don't want to be having loose uh, your, your fingers like the glove all the way out here and then you're trying to grab something and then the glove's in the way and it gets the, gets the polish and everything. So I want to make sure they're pretty tight but comfortable, okay? Um, all right, so, oh, and then switch them out because sometimes you'll sweat, um, and if they don't have the powder on the inside, which helps absorb the, the, the sweat, um, you, they get hot and itchy in here, so you want to change out your gloves ever so often. Definitely after each client, for sure, but, uh, if it's a long service, you want to make sure to change them out. All right, so I've got my lamp, my, um, UV LED light here. Actually, I think this is just an LED light. So I've got it connected. It's a little portable, okay? It just closes like a little laptop or compact. When, when I push the button here, it turns my light on in here, like so, okay? So this one uh, is from Dashing Diva. Push the button, it turns off. So I'm gonna be using this mini one here for today. All right, uh, my polishes. I have the polishes that I have, I'll be using in this container. These are more of my frequent to go to, um, go to my favorite colors, my favorite bases, top coats, things like that, my blooming gel. This is just what I typically tend to use when I am doing gels, okay? And then of course I have my collection, my other polishes, but those are the most common ones that I use. And then here I wanna share with you, I have this little tray. And on this tray, I'll show you what I have. So this is my working area that I have here. Now, because I'm at the edge of the table, um, I don't have my 
my items on the right hand side but if you're right handed you want all your supplies to be on the right hand side so you can just grab from the right to your work area. You don't want to be reaching over or in front of or across to where you're you're overreaching and over time that's going to hurt your back or your shoulder or your arm. So everything should be right if you're right handed or to the left of you if you're left handed. But I'm at the edge of the table so mine is on the opposite side. Um, so alcohol wipes. If you don't want to be messing with the actual uh, liquid alcohol and cotton rounds and all of that. If you just want to have the alcohol wipes, these are great. These I found at, um, I think it was Burlington for $2.99. They're alcohol wipes the only, and they're, they're lint free, meaning that these don't have little fuzzies that stick out like cotton would, right? So these are perfect because I'm not going to leave any cotton residue uh, or any little cotton stick, uh, fuzzies on my nails. Okay, so they are alcohol. Okay, there's uh, 56 in this pack, so it'll last me a good little while. The only bad thing about these is that it's only 75% alcohol. So you want to have the highest content alcohol possible so that it works the best. They work okay. They, they work good, um, but the higher percentage of alcohol, the better. But these work great. And they're great, portable, um, you don't have to carry the whole gallon liquid, it's not going to spill, stuff like that. Alright, I have my uh, four uh, containers here, my four pots, um, or pot. Uh, so then this is the a pink one, a light pink one. This is a mint color. These particular ones don't have... Um, uh, from Ansoff, they don't have the names on here. They just go by number. So it's the 031 and the 09 or 009. And so we're going to be working with these two. And then I have the sugar or spider gel. Um, this is from You Are Sugar. Um, they, it's called a variety of different things, but spider gel is what's most commonly called. Um, it's very similar to gel. It's just very stringy. Okay, and so these, uh, I, um, they're already dirty, so I'll show you how to take care of your um, pots. So this is a little container uh, bin that I have, and this is where I keep my gel brushes that um, I use only for gel. Now if you notice, this one is a little bit big, a little bit long, and so it kind of bends my bristle. So you always want to make sure to take good care of your, um, I angle it there, um, but you always want to take good care of your brushes. For gel brushes, for the most part, you'll find them to have a cap, okay? And this particular one is for poly gel, so it does have a spatula. Um, you can also use the spatula for um, 3D gel, but for the most part, um, gels will have a um, cap. Okay, because you, you want to make sure that the light doesn't um, touch your brush or shine on your brush so it does not cure the gel on your brush. So I have another one that has my buffers. Okay, so when I run out, I just refill and it fits about 24 of them. Then I also have here my um, my Cristrio. This is my, I love this brand, um, but this is my brush collection. This is what I do my nail art with when I do uh, work with gels, okay? And uh, lastly, I'm gonna be using, instead of the fingers, I'm gonna be using this here um, display. It's a nail display. Um, and this particular one uh, is on a chain. So for you instructors watching, I order these from Burmax. This is the DL-C320. Okay, and so it is it has 40 tips in here. Okay, so as a teacher, you can pass these out. Um, as a, a service provider, a manicurist, nail tech, you can use these in a variety of ways. So the way I like to use them is whenever I start um, doing a design or let's say Christmas is coming around or a season or holidays coming around, I take one of these um, chain rings and I know I have 40 in here. So I create my designs on these nail um, nail sticks. Okay, people call them different things. Um, but then that way you can hang this and then when people come into your salon, you can number them or name them or put alphabet, uh, you know, alphabet on it. 
and you can um, say, okay, well, you want a Christmas design or you want, you know, the spider gel technique or nail art. Here's my ring. Here's my um, work. Okay. Take a look at them and tell me or pick, pick one or tell me which ones you would like. And so the client looks through it and they're like, ooh, I like this design. And oh, you know what? I want this other one here on my my pinky and I want this one on my 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 pointer or whatever and so then that way your client has a very uh, easy access and um, something that's tangible instead of just a picture they could see your work on here now the best thing about this is you can open this up this chain up and you can change these out um, or you can throw them out um, if you need want to add less or take away some or you want to add some more okay so this is really great to have um, in your collection not and you don't have to work with them in the chain you can open it up and do um, work on one uh, stick nail stick at a time so I'm going to go ahead and take one out from here like so okay so I'll be working on these like that you can um, also find them on other um, in other places but I I'm a, I'm a Burmax girl so I like to order my stuff from there um, for school. All right, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be um, working with the gel uh, pots. So first thing that I'm going to do, I'm not going to shape my nail tip, but I am going to buff it. So we're going to go ahead and take our nail tip, okay, or our nail stick and our buffer, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to remove the shine. I'm going to close my light because I don't want my dust from my nail tip to be in there. And I'm going to move my gel pots to the side. And I'm going to take my nail tip and I'm going to remove this top shiny, the top surface layer, the shiny layer. Okay. Now, I don't want to go overboard. I don't want to thin my client's nail out too much. I'm going to do the sides and the tippy tip. Okay, so that way the um, uh, gel polish will adhere. So I'm going to take my alcohol wipe, okay, and I'm going to wipe the sides under and the tippy tip, okay, the top, to make sure that I have all that debris off of my nail tip, okay. So that is that there. Okay, I'm going to let that dry for a quick second. Then um, if you wanted to, you can add the base coat. I'm not going to today, but you can add the base coat. Um, I'm going to go ahead and work with this pot here um, and just go straight from here. And I'm going to work with a brush. Now, typically, if you were to be working with, let me use this one. If you were to be working with a regular polish bottle, a gel polish bottle, you're going to know that, let me get mine here. You're going to know that you are going to have, like for example, this is my top coat, okay? You're going to have the bottle, like a nail polish bottle, but it's gel polish in here. And you are going to have a brush that comes with a product that you can just simply apply, right? That this is new, new technology. Old technology, old school, um, Whenever they first came out with gel polishes, they came in pots like this. And so you had to have a brush, you had to dip into it and polish. The gel in a polish bottle, a nail polish bottle like this, did not, it just wasn't a thing yet. Okay, that came about later on. Um, so I'm going to show you how we have these. Now, for those of you that are... Um, at school, you're going to be able to play with these, and for those of you that are at home, I apologize, but uh, you will be able to play with these in the future, okay? So when you open your pots, when you get them, okay, you're always going to, when you first uh, open them, there's going to have, there's going to be a metal, um, uh, not, it's not metal, it's like a plastic seal. You want to take a sharp, uh, small little knife or blade and carefully cut around the edges, get all that off. You can leave the um, little, ha you can leave, leave half of it on so that way you can wipe off the brush on the half part 
of that foil and not wipe your brush off on the edge of your um, container so you don't get that dirty. Okay, we'll talk more about that in a minute. So um, there's also a little, um, this is on this side here, but there's this little um, like cardboard circle. You can keep it or throw it away. If you keep it, it is a double protection of making sure that your gel helps, uh, it helps make your gel stay inside of your pot. The most important thing is that you don't want your pots, when you're putting your pots away, you want them to sit upright like so, because if they go this way, they will seep out of your container. Okay, so they have to sit like so, facing up. Okay, um, so every time you open, you want to just make sure to open and you can swirl your lid if there's any stringies. Um, kind of like a hot glue gun, you always get those strings. You want to swirl it until there's no more strings and put that to the side. Now you can take the back of your brush, dip it in, and you can swirl to mix your color together. Sometimes the colors will um, separate. And so you want to make sure that you are able to have a good solid color and that the, pro the ingredients in here are mixed. So as you can see, my pink just got a little bit darker. So it's been sitting there since last school year. We had not used them, so. Now the only bad thing about this is that you do waste some of the product. So you just come in and you just wipe the side of your tip of your brush. Now rotate your brush as you're wiping. Give it a little swirl till it comes off and then there you have it on the tip. So then you're gonna take your alcohol wipe, twist and pull. Okay, and each time that you use an alcohol wipe and you put gel on it, you need to turn it to a clean part of the napkin. Um, if you keep using the napkin, you're just gonna spread the sticky all over. So this one, I'm going to throw this away and I'm, not, I'm going to get a new one to use next. Okay. All right. So with the pots that we do is we're going to take our brush and we're going to pick up some product. I'm going to keep my brush clean. So if you notice, I only pick a product on the bottom. I'm going to make my pinkies kiss for stability. And then I'm going to apply my gel. Now remember that gel is a gradual application of color. It is not like nail polish, well, it shouldn't be either, but it's not like nail polish where you automatically get this, um, the pigment that you want. Now, some gels are very um, strong in their tone and their color, and some are a little bit more diluted, kind of depending on the quality and the brand. So you definitely want to um, just understand that if you have a whole bunch of gel product in your on your brush, gel is like honey, right? It's going to drop down and like the bead of honey, it's gonna spread until it can spread no more, until it's as flat as it can get. Remember that the nail is curved from side to side and from front to back, okay, the natural nail. So um, the the gel will continue to spread like honey to the outside, so the cuticle area and the side walls and the tip corners of the nail um, shape that you created until it hits the light. So if you have a lot of product on your brush, you're going to get chunks and you're going to have the, the cuticles flooded, which you don't want to do. Okay, so just a very, it almost should feel like you don't have enough. If it feels like you don't have enough, then that's good. Okay, I'm going to cover my gel. I'm going to bring it over to my other side. I'm going to bring my light over. I'm going to open it up and I'm going to cure. my nail here. So I'm going to hold this here for just a quick second. Okay, so I went ahead and added a second coat so you can see it's a little bit more solid in tone. A great way to see how consistent your application was as you're practicing is hold this up against the light and when you're looking through the nail tip you'll be able to see if it's blocked if it's blotchy or if it's consistent of uh, in your application all the way through the nail.
Now, I wanted to also share with you, I've got some product here on this one still, but I went in and took one of the alcohol wipes and I need to clean up my cuticle area. So I took another brush that was clean and I went ahead and wiped that cuticle area and then I wiped my brush off on my alcohol wipe. So just doing so, going back and forth gently, you don't want to jam the brush into um, the napkin and you don't, or towel it, and you don't want to rub it in. And um, just fold the, the napkin over and squeeze it out. Okay, and that's how you can keep your brushes clean. You never want to have your brushes with any product out when the light is on because then it will cure the um, gel into your brush and it'll harden. Okay, so my, my nail tip here is ready. When I'm done with uh, this brush, again, I can just clean it up. Um, you can also have a damping dish with alcohol so that you can... Um, clean that uh, gel off of your brush uh, should that be the case. Okay, so we're going to put that to the side for now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and have grab the spider gel. Now this particular um, spider gel pot has been previously used by the students from last year. It was really hard for me to open. And um, you can see on the outer edges, it's this guy's dirty. Not dirty like soiled dirty, it's dirty like there's uh, gel all over. So to keep, or when you encounter your products like that or products like that, what you need to do is just take the alcohol wipe or a wipe with alcohol and you're just going to clean it off. And you'll notice that it's going to come right off. Now the only time when it's not going to come off um, well, if it takes a little bit, it's probably because it's been there for a while. But the only time that it does not come off is if the um, uh, light hit the pot and uh, it has cured into it. So that definitely is going to take um, a good, good while to come off. Okay, you can um, use your file or your buffer to take that off or you can go ahead and soak that. So when you open it, this is a spider gel and you can probably see there some strings there. Um, it's a little bit harder to see. You can see the strings there. Um, but you want to swirl, move up and down and swirl. And as you're swirling, then those strings are going to go away. But eventually, um, they, they do, but it takes a little bit. So you see that how, how dirty that lid is. Now to avoid that, um, like I said, you can leave that original um, seal, half of it. You can fold it over or just cut off half, and it will help your pot stay cleaner. Um, so definitely using your alcohol wipe and coming through and removing as much of the um, excess gel. Another thing that happens is that your gels do get stuck together. The the actual uh, top lid and the, the base will get stuck together. So you want to um, be cautious with that. Okay, but we're not gonna focus too much on that. Um, as a as a artist, you do want to make sure that you are cautiously aware of your tools and your products, and you want to take care of them because they they cost you money. Okay, so very basically, we're going to come through, and I'm going to show you a very common way on how the spider gel um, is used. So I'm going to use this. Uh, it's a dual brush, it has a brush, a very thin brush on one end, and it has a daughter, a thin daughter on the other. So it's got the little bead at the tip, you can see there. I'm going to pick up and load my daughter, and I'm going to pick up some spider gel, okay, some product. If I pick up a lot, my string is going to be, and this is really hard to show you, so if I can bring it over this way, it's really thick there. Okay, it's going to have a thick line if I just kind of give it a swirl and pull. See there, my line is thinner. So this, and it will not break contact until it dissipates all the way. So this is my application. Okay, right there. Uh, from a thick line to a thin line. So a lot of people will pick up the gel string and they will just go round and round and they'll just continue to pick up. Do you see how thick my line was? Because my gel application, uh, my string was thick. But I can also do a thin line as I go through. So a lot of people will just grab the gel and just wrap it around, okay? Let me tell you, that works great, but 
when you turn it around, you have all the gel down here. Plus, on your core, on your side walls, you have chunks because you, you're at an edge. So all of this, your client doesn't want to see all that. When you put that into the light, if you don't pay attention, all of this is going to be under the client's uh, nails and on their skin. So they're not going to want to see that. You're going to have to take alcohol and wipe that off before you cure it. The other bad thing about having it picking up a really thick um, chunk of gel like so um, is that, remember that gel is like honey. I've got a little string here. Gel is like honey, okay? It is a bead of a of, of very, very, um, you definitely has the viscosity in it, but you, the bead is gonna drop down and like honey uh, over a, a surface, it's going to continue to spread, 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 and gravity's gonna pull it down until it's as flat as it can get. Now remembering that the nail is curved forward and backward and side to side, um, it's going to spread unless if you immediately put it in the light. So as you can see at the time I was talking, the lines are now becoming uh, kind of chunky and kind of merging together. Okay, um, Even the thin lines have spread out some. So that's definitely something that you want to be aware of that happens whenever you use too much. Okay, So keep that in mind. Now I'm going to go ahead and wipe this here. All right, let's say you didn't like that. You've already cured your your pink color, your base color. Okay, so you can see I still have some of the, this is a hunter green. Um, I'm just gonna take my alcohol wipe and I'm just gonna remove the spider gel. And so now I have a clean, clear plate or slate to work on. I'm also gonna flip it up under over and I'm gonna clean the, and wipe the underneath because I also had the spider gel on the bottom and the sides and the tippy tip. Remember that wherever the um, gel is on this napkin here, if I use that same dirty spot, I'm just going to go back and dirty my nail again. So I've got to find a clean side of my um, napkin or towelette each time that I use it. Okay. So I'm going to wipe that. It does have alcohol, so I'm going to let it dry just a quick second, and I'm going to come back and do this again. Oops. And it's, it is very messy to work with. Uh, you get it's, it's like a spider gel, like a spider web. Once you get stuck into it, you're kind of stuck into it. So I'm going to come by. And so that going round and round is one way. Okay, I'm going to pick up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to pick up some. And usually you work over the pot. So I'm going to go and do vertical lines. And I'm going to touch down on my nail, and then I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to move it. Touch down on the nail, pick it up and move it. Touch down, pick it up and move it. Okay, so then here you can see a very thin line. And I'm going to pick up some more. I'm going to pull upwards. I'm going to let it drip. And make sure it's not too thick. Remember, I don't want too thick, so, so I just push it down. I'm going to lay down. I'm going to let it touch down onto the nail. And then I'm going to change my direction. Now keeping in mind, okay, keeping in mind, it will continue to flatten out until I cure it. Okay, so I'm going to take my string back and forth. Oop, that was way too much. Just pull it up, give it a twirl, okay? And here you go. Here's your vertical application. Give it a little twirl. Get make sure you get rid of all the strings. The strings are very, very thin, like a spider web. You know, sometimes you feel the spider web on you, but you can't really find it to take it off of you. Okay, they're very, very thin, and if you move over somewhere, you will drag it on onto that other surface. So there is a vertical application of the spider gel. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe that off. Okay, I have a clean slate here. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the same, but now I'm going to do a horizontal side to side. So you can do any type of um, application wherever the nail, um, wherever the curve of the nail is and the spider gel touches it. 
that's where it's going to land. That's where it's going to be, okay? Wherever you allow it to touch or not touch. And so here's a very sharp zigzag and horizontal, okay? You can also do, and I'll wipe this off as well, okay? You can do a round or a curved line. You just have to be a little bit more meticulous so you can just bring it. Okay, if you wanted to do some sort of a, um, and you can go backwards even on it. Okay, if you wanted to do some sort of a curved pattern, so here is a little bit of the curve there. It just depends on how you move your spider gel um, across the surface of the nail. Wherever the spider gel touches down on the surface of the nail, that's where it's going to um, apply to. So here's uh, some curved designs there. Okay. Now, when you're working with your nail art, with your gems and your foils and all of those awesome things, you can add um, so much more diversity to your nail art portfolio, bringing all of those things together, like the foils and the gemstones and feathers and glitter and all those other things. Okay. So... Just keeping in mind, when you pick up your spider gel, if you pick up a thick string, it's going to give you a very thick line. And when you pick up a thin string, it's going to give you a thin line. Keeping in mind that when it's thick, when you apply it down on the nail, it's going to spread. So if you take too long, it's not going to work. Okay, it's going to spread out and it's going to look chunkier than what you want. So if the thing is that you want to have a chunky piece, Pick up a, a big chunk of the product like so. Well, that was way too much. Pick up a chunk like so, and then do your design, put it in the light, let it cure, and then come back and do your thinner or smaller or the rest of the section of your nail. So that way it cures and stays how you um, want it to stay, okay? Um, it, there's tons of different things you can do. You can do actual um, symmetrical pieces. Okay, like the 1920s roaring, um, the roaring 20s designs. You just have to make sure that you're very precise on what you are bringing, what designs you are bringing in, what uh, direction, and where you're laying down your your design. You can go over a variety of times. It just depends on how you want to do it. Well, I brought myself another string on the other side. Okay, so here's some just straight lines. You can do thick and thin as you see there, but always remember that when you're doing the thick and the thin, it, it definitely is going to make a difference when you take a long time. So like my first line is already spreading too thick and my second line is spreading already as well. So you can see the difference in that. My thin ones though, as you notice, they still pertain, um, they stay pretty thin, but like up here, it's a little bit more of a thicker line. And so that piece is starting to spread as well. So as soon as you are um, happy with the line, put it in the light, let it cure, come back and finish your design, okay? So that is how spider or spider gel works. Um, it comes in a variety of colors. You can um, you can make you can mix the product together. Like if you had a black and a white and you wanted a gray, you can mix it together. It works just like regular gel. It will not set and cure until you put it in the light. All right. So when you're done with your tool, you just come in with your alcohol wipe and you wipe it down. Make sure you wipe it really good. As the If the wipe is clear when you're done uh, wiping it, then that means you've got all the product off. Make sure that you clean the top surface of the rim of your product. 
so that way it does not um, stain or get your inside of your lid dirty uh, which causes you to have a tough time opening your product bottles at a later time. Now when you are cleaning it you are going to pick up the product and you are going to have the stringy pieces coming about. So you do want to be sure um, to be careful with that if especially if you have things uh, it'll it'll get it'll get everywhere. It's a pretty messy product. Gel is a messy product if you don't know how to work with it. Um, very, very important. Make sure that when you're cleaning your containers that you don't have um, a lint type of uh, wipe or cotton round. You don't want all the fuzzies to get in there. You want something that's lint free. All right, so that is how you work with spider gel. If you have any questions, let me know. And if your hands are sticky, just get some alcohol wipes or alcohol wipe it off and you'll be good to go. All right, thank you for tuning in and we'll see you on the next one.